folks, welcome to today's uh, show. It's the uh, review of the quarterfinals. Uh, unfortunately, we're not being joined by Porrig O'Brien. Uh, Porrig, it's that Nava broke down and he can't yes. find his way to the uh, library here in uh, Mostrum, so we it's sent ridiculous. out a scouting party. It's ridiculous at this stage. Absolutely. Like, I'm professional. What are, the main, what are the main headlines on the back there, Jim? No, I don't know. Sir, who wrote? Tony G, was it? No, no. Parik Bryan wrote it. Maybe he's still writing up a report for him. Carry Kedmund appeal creating uncertainty. He's oh. still trying to drag the arse out of that. No, oh, it is. Yeah. And then on know. the second last stage, Superior Kilo march on despite many missed chances. Yeah, yeah. Sure, I would have wrote that myself, for God's sake. And the next uh, one, Jimmy. Wait, no, what's that one? Right. Clever Colin okay. Kill. Or clever Colin. <laughs> Did you ever really see anybody clever in Colin Kill? <laughs> say. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, sure, we'll, we'll, clever we'll... Colin Kill move a step closer in quest for title glory. Yeah. yeah. And then Molyneux can call on their vast experience to get past Granard. I and just yeah. about get just, past. Just about, but they did enough, and that's all they have to do. In fairness to them. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So we may call it off now. Uh, oh, Benny, or uh, Podgy, thanks very much well, for coming. Fair play, yeah. That's a story, Mr. Podgy. Sorry about me, boys. Yeah, yeah well, but... Podgy, you have to be on time. This is your second time to be late. 20 minutes late. It's just untenable. Well, yeah. I'm working with two golfers here now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, <laughs> you've only one more go, and if you, if you ruin the next one, that's it. You're out. Okay. Work, working, he says, for God's sake. <laughs> right, folks, thanks very much for joining us here today for the uh, quarterfinal review. And uh, as we've just read on, on the papers there, uh, despite him being late or whatever, we decided to accept him. And of course, our good colleague Jimmy. Jimmy, you're going to Broadway, apparently. Heading to Broadway so, tomorrow. That's yeah, you're the bringing the one-act play. I'm bringing the three-act play with me. The oh, two yeah. wife and daughter, yeah. Oh, they're all very going. good, <laughs> very good. <laughs> and okay. I wonder if I had only for your exposure you're giving me, Mick. Absolutely, yeah. Young yeah, Virginia yeah, in New York will bring me over. All yeah. expenses paid trip. Well, you know, in the old days, when we went to school tour, and when you came home, you had to bring a rock. So would you get a rock from New York? We won for the seven one vote. Oh yeah, yeah. Not go over the head with this, but it's cool tour. Yeah. Right, lads. Uh, your big story that this weekend, Haji. Uh, yeah, we're just uh, we're just uh, it's the the character and the appeal. Money uh, here has become a bit of an history at this stage, but um, it, uh, it was deferred back to uh, it was a win for Carrigan and Andrew because I mean obviously the it didn't. Decision. That's what Minister Heron's made no decision on the offer CC decision to award money back to the win. So, in other words, they deferred it. So, deferred it back to Longford to form a new committee. Now, a new CCC without any of those with the best of interest in the clubs in the championship. But since that, uh, the offer CCC have, have uh, been that to uh, the Central Appeals in Cork Park. And they haven't been with now, and that's going to be heard this week. I'm not too sure if I can be tomorrow night. Not entirely sure, but it's just another stage in the, in the very and prolonged saga. Yeah, but but obviously, um, like the powers that be obviously are confident that things are going to go ahead because it'd be an awful mess if 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 things were hauled back and some games had to be replayed or whatever. Wouldn't it? it wouldn't be an awful it'd be an awful mess. I suppose in defence of Carrick Edmund, um, they felt it's just the route they had to take. Um, look, at one for a few for a week. I said they were in the championship, and then they were out, and and then and into a relegation. So it was a big drop to go from a quarter final place into relegation. So look at um, I don't know. It, it, uh, in a way, it it, it seems it. to me it, it's a procedural thing, really. Like they they haven't been told, or oh, you have justification here for your appeal in a way, except for the fact that it was, there could be an element of bias in it. But as regards the, the main thing about possibly winning the game or losing the game, I don't think that was sort of uh, adjudicated on, was it? Well, I don't know whether it has or not, but at the end of the day, along for GEA are ignoring any appeals that are going on, or counter appeals or anything, they're ploughing ahead with the championship, Ignore, ignoring the elephant in the room, really. Are the right to do that? Is it going to have uh, repercussions on them somewhere down the line? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I think it's gone too far now for Carrie Kevin to get anything out of it, and it was unfortunate. And as we mentioned last week, to put on that relegation battle with Slashers to fix that fixture and force Carrie Kevin's hand to not turn up for that match, like that, that. That's you know, it's not fair to put a club, and there was no need to put that um, game on. 
that, that Saturday, I don't think, Paul. Like, and and, and they, their appeal was heard that morning. Yeah. So, you, have to, you have to show respect for clubs as well. You can't just disregard their concerns. and their, like, There were genuine concerns, as far as I'm concerned. You know, and you, you well, can't suppose, disregard We're not privy to all the information. No, and true. maybe this is the way they thought, the, 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 the CC or maybe the county board thought, this is the best way to deal with it. Sure, look at we can only surmise and, and you know. That's it. Well, I think it's gone too far at this stage, yeah. anyway, for anybody to come so back. So it was a sort of a, a contrasting uh, set of quarterfinals on Saturday. It was okay, it was, the weather was uh, a bit uh, dull but, uh, and rain at the end of it. And then on Sunday, a gorgeous day. So, um, starting with the game there, a uh, Kilo uh, marched on there, they beat um, Dramard. Oh, you, you were at that match, I'm sure, as you were oh, with them all? Uh, yeah, no, um, in the first half, the Kilo looked great. I mean, we know it's not red in the set of them. The score two goals, they could have scored five or six. They ran through the Dramard defence, hit them wide open. But just as in Kilo kind of won the main. Michael I was doing the commentary on that one, I was up in the gantry and uh, you know, and, uh, um, just about yeah, to the bottom. I noticed, Jimmy, you were in the uh, enclosure. I was, absolutely. And Lower Tina was up above, uh, placed the full elements. Yeah. 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 You're one hell of a brave guy. <laughs> but I, I saw Michael Quinn, who was talking out, and I said, Jerry, maybe he's going to make a, an appearance, but then he, he was sitting beside me in the scaffold and <laughs> doing stats or whatever, so he says, no, he's not going to be uh, taking any part in it. Do you know, but look, they're, they're, they're doing great with that one. So he, he'd love to be playing, but um, it's, it's the story is about the rest of them were, were taken. Mark Hughes had taught had a, had a wonderful game for Kilo. But talk about German Masters. And like we highlighted German as being a, a, a dominant player for Dramard. He had a wonderful first half. Like he, 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 The breeze was very strong going up to the Red Cow goals. And he stuck over three points from 40, but just with ease, just let the, let the ball go. But the tackle he made for, for, for Joe Haggins' goal. The Kilo lad was coming out with the ball. And Masters and the Mehem with his shoulder, you'd hear it in Edgerstown. Like, Dispossessed them and Hagen got the ball and Mihal Hughes had the chance and Hagen just into an empty net. But it was all about German masters. But the thing about him is the rest of them didn't live up to the promise of German. Aaron Farrell had a good start, Joe Hagen had a great start. But once Kilo wants to see somebody's on form, well, they get men on them and they stifle them then, you know, and they know how to take lads out of games, not physically, but you know, with skill and with marking them, you know, and they did that. But they say Mark Hughes could have had a, he, he scored a penalty, scored another goal, missed a penalty, had other goal chances. Yeah. Like it was, it was, it was off the season. Oh, he could have. And it was Jack, I gave him the match, was chatting him after. I says, You're nearly on a hat trick. He says, I know. He says, You never scored a hat trick in the championship. And <laughs> maybe that was playing on his mind. And he kicked the penalty wide. And um, then they have the benches. The bench is very important to know. They bring on Ronan McGoldrick. Now, how many times has Ronan McGoldrick come out ah, yeah. and made a huge difference? He scored three and lovely three points. Three yeah. lovely points. And yeah. he's very composed when he gets within range of all. Yeah. Yeah. Like he, 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 and there's no panic, there's no goals for it. He kicks his points, kicks yeah. the ball over the bar, kicks it over the bar, whatever. He knows that if you keep the scoreboard ticking over, yeah. we're in front, puts the pressure back into the mark. Yeah. And he's a cool head needed. He's there. Um, one of the best impacts of his life. One word you use there is composure, yeah. and that's Kilo all over, isn't it? They're so composed in the ball, there's no panic. Even when a team come back at them, yeah. they're no panic. They can reset, go again at them, you know, and, and, and the, the, the dominant players, all, the loss, the young, it was at Farley that lost early on to the show, after that shoulder went off, yeah. but Evan Farley came on and played very well. Gavin for, Hughes went uh, off early, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Gavin Hughes went yeah. off early, Evan Farley came in in, in yeah. his place, yes. and uh, I don't think he had appeared in the championship, had he up to this? No, well, he might have. Uh, yeah, maybe in so, and out. But, 
But he, uh, See, such is the length of the squad, Jimmy. That's the thing. That's they're using a lot of players. Yeah, but there's still a few lads coming so, in even in the championship quarter final. You know what I mean? Like, and then you have lads, other lads on the bench that are mm. not to just bigger. I don't know. Do you know Moffat now? Yeah, he's keen doing or uh, he's injured. I think. Yeah, they were. Lads like that, like Mickey Quinn, of course, we mentioned already. Yeah. I mean, they have a they have a bench that no other has. Yeah. And there's quality on the bench. Absolutely, yeah. It's not like a lad would throw in and he would give his best. These mm. fellas are quality footballers. So, like, I mean, as I say, people were saying last week they got no test. Well, they got a test last well, week. Well, they did, absolutely, yeah. you know. And uh, they were given lots of a point to Mard, but probably just didn't have enough power there, you know. The Brahan, James Martin, he didn't have much of an influence. Francis McGee didn't have his usual influence that he had. Aaron Farr played well, Joe Haggard. But, you know, um, uh, just a comment on the ref, Pudge. I don't know what you. There was yellow cards being given out. I couldn't keep hand of what yellow cards were being given. Four of one, is it? Yeah, I, I didn't know what was going on. And, uh, and, and Paddy Kieran got sent off for two yellows. I, I missed that actually on commentary. And then Fionn Howard can got sent off for yeah. Tremard, and I didn't know what that was they about. Say, well, but, they were saying that Tremard were very annoyed about that. And, uh, it was talking to John Duffy there in the press box. Mm. And, uh, Kind of thinking now, well, what did he get that yellow for? Yeah, I couldn't see what well, was. Well, if something happened. Uh, maybe the linesman came in and said something to the referee. Yeah. You know, who are we to say? Like you know, it's a tough job at the best of times. But I, I, I think a player should, for referees, if you're giving a lad a yellow card, he should be clear what he's getting the yellow card for. That there's no confusion. He can't because I saw him on the sideline. He was going. What? No, he, he was still unsure. Why am playing I? Playing well too. And he was playing well for an hour. Championship for mm. As a wing back. Mm. Hour. But just have clarity with referees. Well, this is what you're getting your yellow card for, yeah, yeah. and then there's no doubt about it. You know. It's, it's, um, well, that's one thing I notice about referees now nowadays. They are usually. Yeah. You know, they, they explain. And Mark Lancy is usually very videos. clear because yeah, I do yeah. hear him when you're closer to the sideline. Yeah. He's telling the players. Of course, uh, yeah. the and, uh, you know what I mean. But, yeah. I, I did speak to him at half time because I wasn't sure there was two yellow cards given out and Oshin, um, the goalie, Oshin Hurrican for Dramard got a yellow card just before the penalty. Yeah. He, he stuck his foot into the penalty spot and started digging it out. I saw that. <laughs> so he got a yellow card it's for a that. Bit of <laughs> but that's the penalty he used, Liz. spot where you <laughs> fell last week. <laughs> People were giving out to me and they felt that my comeback against you the last week was atrocious. So I'm not going to say anything now. But I do feel I have to intervene here and just say, Jimmy, here's a cup of tea for you. <laughs> Apparently you were giving out at half time because nobody's ringing up a cup of tea. Yeah, well, no. Tina was up above getting rained on. There's nobody bringing her tea. Would have blown off. Yeah, would have blown off. Yeah. What do you think, Jimmy? Ah, sugar and that. Yeah. I don't like sugar. <laughs> well, look at. Let's get on to the second match on on that day. And the, the weather got a little bit worse, I think, and it was raining by the end of it. But it yeah. got to near the end. Colin Kill. Uh, they've moved a, a step closer for title glory, and uh, by God, didn't they do it in in some fashion? A bit of a surprise, Jimmy. Well, I built this game up to be a game I was really looking forward to, and I thought it was going to be a high scored and entertaining encounter. It was. Nice. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was a tactical Tact battle, battle, real tactical that Colm Kill won hands down. And Clungish, now the strength of the breeze in the first half that Clungish were playing with was was huge, and. They still reverted to the same tactic they used in the first half against Abilara, where they just defended and held and tried to set. Whereas they should have gone for Colm Kill in that first half. They scored five points in that first half with that breeze. And really, I think that was their, their, their downfall. You know, if they had... With the, and like that Andrew Flynn back, Andrew was playing well, but they weren't giving ball in. They weren't and I, I was saying that to them, I was, I was saying to, talking to a few of the lads after this, is, I was a bit surprised and, you know, you call it another way, but I was surprised that they actually went with because they had the call. They went with the win first half. I would have thought you'd wait till the second. But, yeah, but if you're going to go with it, use yeah, it. Yes, use it because you saw how Jeremy Masters in the first game when he was letting the breeze and they were firing them over. And 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 Michael Flynn did score one great point with the when the wind when he did go at it. But apart from that, they were lateral in the half back line, passing forward and back, and you know they weren't giving it in. But Declan Riley did say, "I give him man of the match." I thought he was very good for Colin Kill. He says. 
their game plan going now was to stop the freeze, stop the freeze, stop Magic Carey getting free, easy freeze, and they did that, and 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 stop that the scoreboard taking over for Slungish, you know. So that was important. Yeah, and they also technically they got a spot on Jared Carberry. The, um, the obvious, obviously, the big threats on the Slungish team were Jack Dugan and Patrick Carey, mm. and they were surrounded every time they went for the ball, mm. two or three men, that, you know. So they kind of nullified their threat, and then. Michael Flynn kind of stepped up all right. But other than that, now, you know, you were searching for scores. Yeah. You know, let me score eight points. Like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but for... If for when again, look, I haven't seen that Colin Kidd score on the score on seven. But they, they, they just... They were better on the day. Yeah. And... Uh, no, but did you remember, they won the championship two years ago. People are forgetting that. Like, these are coming down yeah. two years ago. So, like, I mean, it's not like the are coming a bad thing overnight. I know they were in division two. But maybe all those matches that they won mm. built their momentum against lesser opposition, no disrespect to intermediate clubs, that they were able to build up this, this momentum and win the slow, slow and Yeah, no, and they won a couple of trophies as well along mm. the way. And, uh, and now they are where they are. And, and, but, but Jack Duggan being such an influence for them, I think I, I was in the Clungish dressing rooms after the match. I actually had to ask Finney how he can t you can stop marking him now. He says the game is over because he never let him out of his sight. He absolutely never. Wherever Jack Duggan went, Finney Howrican was there and sacrificed his own game for that. You know, but Fergal Shorten had a couple of good goal chances in the first half yeah, as well. Yeah, you know that right, yeah. picked one off the ground, I think, and just missed. It. Caught another one high and dropped it as well. You know. Between midfield yeah, and yeah. forward. He's getting the scores, and you only got one point well, point. He's yeah. doing well and, and he's, great. he's a serious, he's a clean catcher. Yeah, yeah. When that ball comes in, he's going to get it. So yeah. And he's, he's capable of getting the scores as well. Mm. You know, like it's not that he's. Uh, because, yeah. you know, he's a couple of goals scored in the championship. Yeah, but he gets into that position where I suppose you so can't miss. It's another uh, kind of a... But the, the goal was a great goal, wasn't it, yeah, for Colin Kill? Yeah. You know, the two McKeowns running up all, ran up, and he ran and ran and drew, the, and Barry was outside him the whole time waiting, and he drew... The, was the, very good all through. He was, he was very lively. The first half, the very pace, lively. the pace against the breeze that he yeah. was taking on the Clunkish defence. Mm and putting them under a lot of pressure. Yeah. And, and I, 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 Paul had been down by injury, and uh, they, they didn't get an off park really last year. And uh, he's kind of back to his best now, so like, they, have, they have a really good squad there. But he took the ball so well, just yeah, little, yeah. you know, but Ryan had a chance, yeah, yeah. Carl Ryan, he was impressed with Carl, he's, yeah. he's, 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 he's building into a good footballer, he's a hardy buck as well, I you know. Like, Rory sure. played very well, yeah. wing half back, wing he did, half back. he did play very well. Lot, yeah. He was kind of open enough that from this rear. I wonder if Carl McCabe, now his shoulder went out in the first half and he managed to get it back in, yeah, yeah. but then he, he went out again, so hopefully two weeks will be enough for him to get that back right again, you know. Yeah. He was having a decent enough game, you know, but just that shoulder was a problem for him. But Tungish, I just thought they got their tactics wrong. I, I, I thought they should have. I don't know, Jerry Moore, Ronan Sweeney. I don't know why Ronan Sweeney didn't appear. I think he was injured. Well. Was he injured, right, yeah. But again, the, the Brahan David Barden into injury time. Injury time, three. Yeah, no, give him 10 minutes, give him 15 minutes, you know. Yeah, it was a bit late for that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was too late, you know. You know, just reflecting on, on the teams that have lost, it's a huge. It's a, you know, it's 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 not life and death, I suppose, but it's a huge blow for guys who have been training, you know, through the league and then through the summer, building to this, and mm. then, you know, they, whatever, you know, they lose by a, a pint or two. Yeah, it's you gone know, then. Yeah. It, it's uh, sort of devastating for them in a way, you know. Mm. But sure, that's life, isn't it? That's it. You only be one winner. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's it. So uh, the sun, there was good weather, and uh, the first match, Mullen and Yachta. Uh, playing Granard, and uh, I think Jimmy, you must have uh, stashed away the microphone because <laughs> we had the Gremlins uh, in the first match there. Couldn't oh, figure yeah. out what the problem was. Uh, yeah. Granard came very, very close to beating Mullingham. Well, I, t I tip this is the one. I think we got three predictions right. I got this one wrong. You got the Colin Kill one wrong. But I thought that Granard would have a go at, and they did have a go at. It was a great open game of football. It's probably the, the 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 game of the weekend of the four games. You know, both teams went at it. Mullingham, they like the two McGivney's his back. You know, and and had a serious influence on them. The two like David hasn't played all year. James That's hasn't played in the championship. Later on, when it mattered, when the experience came into it. But I think the big turning point in that game was the Mullignac to goal, you, you know, at a time when, when, when Granard were, were beginning to push forward a little bit. And Thomas Gallagher kicked, it was the, the, I'm not sure who slipped, 
one of the, the, the Graner defenders slipped, but there was Mackie to pick up the pieces. And if it's going to fall to the likes of Mackie, yeah. you know, because I mean, he's, he's, he's kind of an anchor man, he can, he can pop up anywhere. Yeah. But he's a fantastic player, man. And that goes with all his experience over the years, particularly with Cav and all. I mean, mm. one of the top forwards, Cav. Oh, absolutely. Had in, in the recent past, in the years have gone by, even. But, you know, Mackie was always rated, rated very highly, and he's uh, a great one to have on your side, isn't he? And he took the goal so calm. Just a bit, a bit like it. Very, very safe, yeah, so yeah, just side for it. In that situation, and experience means an awful lot at this stage of the yeah. championship. There's a very young team, a lot of electron dish. You know, maybe they may took the wrong options. Uh, yeah, look at, I can uh, say he's a great team. They'll, they'll, they'll grow at stature. They're young. Mm. Loads of time. Mm. Pretty good. But, uh, and then but the Darren Gall just before we go off oh, that one, Darren Galler had a had a huge game for Granard, you know, when, when he was the man of the match and yeah. and just, match just scored nine points. Yeah. And he, and, he, and he wasn't the man of the match. Yeah. He said that Darren Galler was the best player. He, he had a huge uh, and for the goal, for the Granard goal, yeah, when yeah. they needed the goal, he caught a ball, gee, and he right to the sky, he caught the ball and gave the ball into Smith there and he, he took his goal very and well. He went out of it, the whole Granard team without with him. Yeah. yeah. And when he came back into it they were on top because these young fellas needed the leader. Seriously, though. But are still a very young team and there, and they'll they'll come, you know, and they'll get gain experience from that, you know. And I can see maybe next year, maybe you know, maybe get you have to, to the similar. They the went in. They, they showed no fear whatsoever. No. Mm. Well, you know, I, I was chatting to Vinnie Nally this morning, and um, like he was in good form, and I'd say they were they're obviously unhappy for losing, but they felt they showed they showed up on the day. Oh, and absolutely, they did. Yeah. Well, yeah. And could easily have won. Easily, oh, easily have won. won it, yeah. yeah. You know, but again, see, one or not, there are their masters at winning the tight game. Absolutely. They got caught there in the county final a couple of years ago. Yeah. The penalty laid on. Nothing they can do about it. No, back. no, they They're all as able to dig out that win. Yeah. You know, you nearly want to be three or four pints clear one or not that go into the home yeah. street. And st even then you're not yeah. sure. Yeah. You're not sure. Somebody, they have a serious heart. and. You have to give them credit. Oh, absolutely. But the, the, the thing about having the Zoom we give him his back as well meant that they, yeah. they didn't start Emmett Brady, but they had him then to bring on. Whereas in other games, they didn't have fresh legs. And he's a great sub to be able to bring in, you know, who's been starting all championship. Probably disappointed to be dropped for a quarter final. But like, again, all Molyneux, they, they'll, they'll fight for the team, whether they're on the first 15 or 10th sub. Yeah. They, they, there's no, it's one goal, win the game, and that's it, you know. Yeah. Very good. Okay, lads, and then the, the second game then was Abilara and um, Brad Klein. I'll let you build that one up, Parry. So, <laughs> I watched it now. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It was absolutely. Now, no offence to both teams. I know it's a championship game, and you go out to just. And all you have to do is win the game. But it was terrible. It was just terrible. Now, it's, it's hard to, to, to pick out highlights in the game, you know. And the highlight of the Robbie. game was nearly. Robbie was good, yeah, but still yeah, missed. Miss, he still he? missed some, yeah. and, and Abilara missed easy, easy chances, and they were off form. They just seemed to be because, right? Shane Kenny scored a great goal. I said, "Be jizz, he's on form," you know. I mean, they never gave it into him after that. They never give a ball into him. And, uh, I, I, I just couldn't understand it. Again, with the breeze in the first half, or that line. But that Abilara defence are very experienced. They are, but you yeah. know what I mean. They were missing King Brady as well. He's a yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. back in the semi-final, like him. But Ratlain were part they were carrying the ball into tackles, losing possession, losing easy possession under very little pressure, and just losing it and, and holding on, maybe passing over and back for two and three minutes at a time and then losing it and going back over. But like at the end of the day they were still never more than two or three points behind. The last kick of the game. Boring Kenny had a shot, just drew on it yeah. and inches. And that would have put them into a semi-final, you know, and that's what the championship is. Now, I'm not degrading any of the teams, but it just was a poor spectacle to watch, you know. And uh, But it was an improvement on their previous quarter-final appearances when they went down badly in both. Yeah, look at exactly. So they, 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 they're getting closer. Um, they, again, they could have won, but... Abilaro were better. Yeah, Brian Masterson played well. Good to see him back. You know, yeah, yeah. Colin P. Smith was there. Peter yeah, Masterson. You go through that defence is very experienced. Yeah, the midfielders were very good again. Scanlon and Batram were very good. Dominated the middle of the field. You know, I'm a bit defensive there, uh, Abilaro. 
pushing up and up a bit more, maybe. Yeah. I don't, they, very it, dependent on Robbie. Very dependent on him, and, and they don't get goals. And in this game, they didn't get goals either. You know, they've only one goal scored in, in the championship so far, uh, 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 Abby Lara. Um, I thought maybe recline the starting the, the drop Shane Ryan who I thought I was having a great uh, championship behind Gareth O'Reilly I don't think Gareth was fully fit you know um, I thought maybe a couple of decisions to made on the line that I wouldn't but look I'm not a manager easy said than done you know yeah but it was, it was, I just thought it was a disappointing game but look at the result Abilar were never going to lose it you know I could have <laughs> Would have been, but it's happened. I think Mustrum did it in 2021 with a goal in the last uh, and robbed it. And last year, Colin Gill did it with the last kick of the game against Molyneux in the 22 final. That's the thing. So nobody will you'll remember the result. That's it, you know. But Recline, they need to build on that next year as well. Similar to Granard, they need to try and build on that. But like injury prone again this year, and they were dogged by that, you know. But if they can build, you know, there's still. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, I was very busy looking for a missing mic, but and I didn't see much of the match in, in great <laughs> detail. But I think it was it was it Owen Kenny or one of the lads that were at Klein by The minute they got the ball, the crowd were just yeah. lifting and rising. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's that type of a player. But that's player. it, he's yeah. excitement when he gets it. Yeah. 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 Has to pay us and puts in and he goes for it, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, both like, um, yeah, the mighty, he might have been kind of well for Terrell last week. He was, and I know I'll be large, they're not... The, the, brother, like, they'd obviously place emphasis on him and Shane. Yeah. You know, they stopped these boys on there for a start, like, you know. And then you had the two masses, then they kind of were there. Yeah. Well, they're good footballers now, what do they play with the country? Oh, absolutely, yeah. that Brian fellow now, he, he was kind of on the level team all this year, and showed them some very good performances and a lot of pace. Yeah. You know, I said, Brian Asson, you know, he played for DCU and the colleges and that. So he had to be good when he gets selected on those. Mm. So the likes of him, it's a huge plus for the likes of Abby. And then, of course, Pablo Frankie, the manager. Ah, yeah, well, look. They're done that. You know? And they're doing enough, and they're, they're doing you know, they're getting there, yeah. and they're in the last four now. De defensively, they're very good. They're not yeah. scoring heavily, but they're keeping other teams yeah. out. So yeah. you and know, you keep doing that. You're, you're, you're. you're yeah, and they have a good midfield. They're standing there. Right? Yeah, and Batram. Uh, yeah. Lynch there. Kelly. Well, Lynch played well again. He did. Oh, yeah. Every Israeli too was coming like that. Too. Yeah, yeah. He put the, the business in the semi-final. Yeah. But they won't care during the semi-final whether the game was entertaining for the spectator or not. Abilara don't give a damn. You know. So lads, uh, it, that brings us to the uh, fixtures then for the semi-finals. Uh, Pachi, do you want to talk about the first one? Well, the first one, well, uh, yeah, well... Which is the first yeah, one? The first <laughs> one? <laughs> well, there's um, one on Saturday. Well, well there's no, so, uh, they're not on the fixture list, that's well, why we're well, asking. It's, it's Kilo, it's Kilo, um, they play Abbey Now, and Colin Kill play one and Now, if Kilo had to pick one, they'd be picking Abbey Lara. Now, it looks like... Draw for them. Abbey Larrow doing a lot of pressure. Like, I mean, they're not expected to win. Mm. They're in the last four, the one game away from the county final. Kilo can, can be a bit complacent in, in, in that situation. But I think, uh, I think with the squad they have now, the competition for this is so keen that everybody's going to be busting themselves. Yeah. So, uh, I'd be thinking now. The other one is. Uh, on the cider, you know, but, but I, was, I was looking back at the last 10 county finals. What do you think of the second one, then? Um, I'll just, I'll go to that, uh, just the last 10, just to say the last four that are in it, yeah. in the last 10 county finals, they've, they've occupied, out of 20, they've occupied 15 20, the of the 20 places in the yeah. last 10 county finals, you know. It's not new. Yeah, and each of them have won, apart from Abbey, lo uh, lost the yeah. four in a row, yeah. like, you know, Colin Gill have won, yeah. you know, Kilo have been in six county finals, Molyneux have been in five county finals, you know, so the four informed teams of the last ten years are in the county final and the last three county champions are in the semi-finals, you know, so it, 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 the form is there and the they're doing well and they're not losing. The, but it, the second one, um, Molyneux and Colin Kill, look at, I, I, I tip Granner to beat Molyneux and I have been, I've been less than impressed with Molyneux, but, but as the championship has gone on, they are building and they're building at the right time and their confidence their confidence is high Justin how are you and the confidence is high um, and they're doing enough to win games and there's a sort of a circular wagon uh, mentality in Mullinyakta where we're not letting anybody in this is we're Mullinyakta 
and we're going out to win every game. And when they have that sort of a belief in themselves, they're very hard to break down. Very, you know, they have it psychologically and on the pitch. You know, there are a lot of older players who, who, who you'd never think are playing so long for Mullignac that the way they still have that hunger, still have that drive to go out and win games. But yet again, Colin Kill are playing absolutely very well as well. So if I'm to call it, I'm going to say a draw and we'll go to a replay. <laughs> and I can talk <laughs> to you after <laughs> that. Procrastinator. Procrastinator number two. A draw is an option. <laughs> uh, um, who, can you pick two key players on the basis of, of, of how they've played so far? Who will be pivotal? on the day for Mullignacta and, and, yeah. and for Mullignacta it's absolutely going to be Jason Matthews I think he's had a wonderful year he's their top scorer he's scoring heavily in it whether it's not always from freeze either it looks very easy yeah, absolutely it? and he scores from play can get goals real danger man real great target man to have in there amongst the older generation that are in there with, with, with maybe not as, as, as fit of legs so for, for Mullignacta it's absolutely um, Jason Matthews who could uh, and he's willing to go back and, and if they're under pressure in the end, he'll, he'll be back in the defence. He's not just waiting for the handy ball up there. He's a worker as well, you know. So for him, uh, for them, that's who I think. For Colm Kill, less of a standout for Colm Kill. There's several dominant players throughout. They're more of a balanced team, but I think I think Fergal Shorten can have a huge influence for them in, in the worker, uh, sort of a Jermud Masterson type influence for the team that, that Jermud has for Jamard. I think Fergal Shorten, and he's been popping up with goals and, and I think if he can get in behind the Mullignac, he could get a goal or two himself, you know. So, so I think for Colm Kill, Fergal Shorten and Jason Matthews for Mullignac. Uh, Padre, I'll ask you the same about the first one, uh, Kilo and Avilara. So a couple of key players. Jimmy wasn't listening to me, of course. He only gave me one player. Oh, do you want a couple? I'll give you a couple. No, no, I don't no, mind. No, no, I can no, go. No, no, yeah. your, your... We'll be here all day, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, we, we can you give you more. Broadway, there, and do, do your, the stuff you're really keen on. Too many good Adji. players. I need to Adji, you might tell me two players on the Avilara team and on the... Well, there's one okay, standing on the uh, sword from anyway. Yeah. That's Robin. Yeah. But he's, the whole thing is you've got to get the ball into Robin. See, Robin is a confidence player. Robin gets the first time. Mm kick them all day. Yeah. Robbie misses early on. Mm. Never gets to him. Yeah, when Benny was interviewing him he said, look if you're nearly back to the way you were. Yeah. You know, he was he was saying that, you know, performed very well. Uh, Robbie didn't quite agree, he was saying, oh well look at I missed this and that, but it yeah. could be on the way. Uh, and again I'm going the one fellow that I think is definitely county standard. Uh, no Robbie did County County and he was super servant. Uh, it's Kieran Scanlon in the middle. Very, very well, yeah. Very well, big man, mm -hmm. and the uh, situation is excellent. Uh, he'd be very hard to held in the middle of the field. You know what I mean? Like, uh, no matter what uh, Kilo come up with, mm -hmm. you know he's yeah, playing, and, playing very well. And then Young Lynch could be alongside him. They played him there. I think they played Fergal centre half back. See, Fergal back used to be a corner back, full back for often. So uh, playing in defence is not new to him. Mm -hmm. Like he's versatile, you know, and maybe that's the way to go these two young fellas in the middle of the field and, yeah. and see what happens, you know. Because uh, on the close side of things, well, obviously Mark Hughes, I mean, you say, the other fellas scores for fun, like, yeah. you know, goes and finds frees, 45s, marks, like, he, he does it all. He's, a, he's, a, he's all in his locker. Mm. And, you know, as I said before, he's working in only five match and he gets man of the match. Uh, maybe his turn will come this year. Mm. If they win it, of course, I think. You know, the only thing is, is it? One of their parents will get ahead. It happened a couple of times in the past, but it didn't. But Mark Hughes will be there. Now, there's one from the there. People are kind of getting involved in all this. That's James Moore. They had a great game. Centre back, back, yeah. I injured all last. I never played. He's bad. Brother Larry is bad. Brother Paddy didn't start. Paddy was a serious one. There's three. Paddy only played in the qualifying last year. I think he was injured all along. Yeah. So there are three new players. These should probably be footballers in the morning. So the Mordens put them together and said, they're the key to the law. Mm. Of course, Mark. Let's not forget Daniel Mimda. We could go on and oh, on. Yeah, and where on. do you stop? And Ronan McGoldrick. They say I decided to stop after Paddy one, Kerner. but look, you know. You know I can I mean? go back to Enda Mackin with a huge game Enda for Colin yeah. Kill. Like, he really had a dominant yeah. game for him and his brother Jack as well. Carl Riley, Carl McCabe. You know, they're, 
they're, they're full of quality footballers, both sides. For, for Mullignac, they pick anybody out of Mullignac. Yeah. You know, they'll do a job for you on the day. Conor Leonard has had, had, a, has a wonderful year. Niall Woods has been having a wonderful year. He's Mackie. Key and Mackie, you know. So you wanted a few, we can give them back. <laughs> Thanks, anyway. You made up for the lack on his part there. Uh, Podgy, uh, time to make a decision. And if you could answer, you know, within two seconds. Right. Uh, Kilo versus Abby Lara. Who will win? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry folks. We just we start that again. Cut. Okay. Hodgy, uh, we're here today now. We've, we've been filming for five hours. Hodgy, could you tell me who's going to win Kilo versus Abilara? Really want to know? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Read the leader next week. <laughs> Keep the sales up. <laughs> Come on, give me an answer. Yeah, I've got you Kilo. Kilo. Okay. And you go. I'll make it quicker. It's going to be Kilo Column Kill final. No. Who are you going to go for? Well, Kilo and Column oh, Kill. Very good. <laughs> I'm a bit slow on these things. So uh, Kilo and Column Kill. Column Kill are going to beat. Uh, Mullinyak. Then Kilo are going to be Abilard. And who will win? Uh, Column Kill Mullinyak. I imagine. In less than three seconds. <laughs> oh, I want a winner, please. Uh, I'll go with the uh, momentum and the fact that they, what everybody was talking about was going to make the final. Give a very slight amount of Colin Kill. Very good. So, Colin Kill. Where did you say it? Very hard now, Okay, folks, thanks very much for joining us for uh, this uh, review and preview show. Sorry? Well, we did no, that we last did that year. Last well, the intermediate, yeah. the intermediate is coming to a crucial weekend this weekend. Oh, the last. You want to talk about the intermediate? Well, it's the last. Okay, okay. that's uh, the intermediate uh, championship. Then is it's, ongoing. Yeah, it's it's down to the last game. Uh, the, the sad news is that uh, Gareth might do. Uh, yeah, uh, often, yeah. Now, here's a club that won the senior championship yeah. on their own. It's Ireland and Patrick. Playing junior in the grade next year and could be joined by Bally Mahan. Frankie Dolan famously won a comedy. Yeah, won in 2001, wasn't it? Two, you know? Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're all dependent on their souls. But the team for me in this championship, in the junior championship, the comedies are expected and the Father Manning gets are expected. But O'Shea is beginning to win a bit now. He doubts about them. And um, Danny Moore. Yeah. Won the junior last year and now we're in a win of the Nippon semi finals. And no matter what happens, they're safe, even if they lose against the uh, Ash. That's the Harley. Is it about Bally Mahan? So that's Saturday evening, so it's the winner takes all. Uh, I don't know how the draw, if the draw works out, if it was a draw, then you get Kirishi play Bally Mahan then on Tuesday. Because they have horror pair of horror of the box, so they might have to be not playing a bit. Mm. Um, in a nutshell, if Cashel, if Bally Moore win, they go to the semi final. Cashel will be on four points. And the man will be on two, Kiddushi will be true. Then Bally Man beats uh, Kiddushi. Uh, Lemon and much probably Cashel on this level. And Cashel will go down on the, on the head to head. Mm. So you could end, you could, Cashel could end up in the joint yeah. election. Yeah. So that made it a very good championship. Yeah. I think the relegation with no playoffs and nothing. Maybe it's the way to go. Yeah, and, and you have Conley's against Conley's against the Gales. That's for a top spot. Yeah. You know, that's so whoever wins yeah, that one is going to be top of the yeah, pile. Yeah, I, yeah, and I say it won't bother them, which is. Yeah, yeah they're going to be playing Ballymore or, or, or Killashi yeah, or, or, or maybe Cashel. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the two of them should, should it should be a, a, a Father Manning Gales Connolly's final. Yeah, well, that's what the yeah. general public would But Arda, just come back to Arda. So, yeah. what, like, I remember back in 1985 when Master won their second championship, the three games against Arda in the park. Like, it was just, uh, you know, there was such battles that time. And, like, you know, it seems to be gone North Longford now, the focus of, of, of football, like, Master or nowhere. Arda, are gone, Ballymahan are gone down, so it's all heading up north Longford where they're, they're winning championships now, you know. Well, under the age structures too, like, you know, yeah. that's coming through, so it's, it's, um, yeah, but it's, it's, uh, Ireland is just, you know, it's, then, it's a long way back. The junior A then make go down to the final four and that, Baptist was still there, the bet Legan last week, Legan are out. Yeah. Two sort of junior clubs, one of them are gone, three second strings left, Smash is coming in, so, if they had lost them, they were going to fail this So, but Kilo would be very hard being the next. Yeah, very strong. Tell them Kilo. Yeah. 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 
wouldn't surprise me if it was Killow and Colin Cahill. Could be a double, you know a double I mean? final. Yeah, you could have. One of them clubs could have two teams, which Killow had last year. Yeah, yeah. They had in the senior, they had in the senior junior. 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 Yeah. They lost the junior. Uh, lads, the uh, the LGFA is coming to uh, uh, a peak as well. So yeah, well, the the, the, the the intermediate final is decided. Carrie Kebman will play Kilo. Carrie Kebman does a very strong win against Mastrum and Kilo beat Ardis. So both of those are in the intermediate final, and both of them are in opposite ends of the the senior final, That's senior semi final. So which are on Sunday. So on Sunday, yeah. yeah. So whoever wins, if Colum, or if 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 Carrie Kebman and Kilo beat. Dungish and Slashers, they're in both the senior final and the intermediate final. But if one of them wins, well then they have to play an intermediate final and a senior final. Which can't be the same day. Probably. Can't be the same day, so yeah. So that's coming to a head very quick there in the ladies. Yeah, I think you know. two of them are on Sunday now, yeah. Carrick Evan and Slashers in Morden Park. And then you have Kilo and Dungish um, Dungish. Gallon Park. Yeah. Uh, the book, the book would suggest that it would be, uh, be two solid senior clubs in the final. Very strange, just don't know. And it's all, the home games in a semi final as well. Yeah. I don't know why to go with that. You want to get a neutral venue for a, for a semi final, you know. It yeah. doesn't make much of a difference. Well, it always gives you that bit of an edge, you know. It's where you train, it's what you're yeah. used to, you know. Yeah. You always get an edge in your home in ground. Park, them girls, uh, they're, they're not as good as Slashers. Mm. them in the league stage. Yeah. So they'll be saying, well, that's And then the. As I say, the Junior A final then, just two semi-finals there to be. That's um, Ballymore and... Uh, Ballymore are, are playing... Uh, Colum Kill and... Ballymore, there's four left in it. Ballymore are playing... Oh, I had it in the effect. Colum Kill and... It's... Uh, Dramard, Ballymore, Colum Kill and Mullignacca. Yeah, yeah, and the Junior. The junior, yeah. them semi finals are also on Sunday, so. mm. and the junior B's are on as well. I didn't look at the yeah, junior. So, they, so the, all the, we'll know all the finals after yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Well, uh, just to let viewers know, we'll hopefully, if you're willing, lads, we'll do a preview show of those finals. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure Clubber will be covering those finals and we'll do a, a review mm. of those finals. So Just before we go, I just, here, just so. to remember Donald Brady, I suppose, on the week that he passed away, you know, a really good slashers man there, you know, over the years and won uh, titles Donald with Brady slashers. And chairman of the club as well. And yeah. He was chairman during probably one of our most successful periods. Dennis Condon was the manager. He got the mm. six finals and won three. Now, Dennis wasn't in charge from the initial one. I think John Murphy might have been in charge. but. He was a gentleman of the highest order. Mm. And, uh, his son Dermot wore the county jersey with pure distinction. Mm. Played with slashes, uh, someone said, all his life. And then actually, his parent Carrick gave him this season because he lives up there and he said it. Yeah, he'd give it to Carrick the bigger he there, yeah. yeah. He's done it 40 years of age. I'm sure he's playing like a young fellow. Yeah, playing great, yeah. yeah. But it's very sad news for them. And I suppose that puts everything into perspective that, you know, you have a team, Carrick Gibbon are uh, in the peace situation at the moment. After losing the likes of Donald Brady, you know, and some Dermot Plessy Carrick Edmund, you know, so look at uh, football, it's not, it's not everything. It's not the but, hey, but try to tell them that some of the, no, no. Some of the players are not. Well, who, who has said football is not life and death is much more important much than more that? Important. Was it Bill Shankly or some of them? By yeah, you know, know, as I say, <laughs> the kind of championship is, is it's what everybody talks about. They talk about nothing else around this time no, of the year, no. you know. They're all geared up, and as it goes by, the teams are they're all gone. As you say, they're gone. It's a very thin line. The Gish are gone. They were well fancy to get mm. to the final. They're gone. You know, somebody, there'll be somebody else gone next week. Yeah. And then. That's it, yeah. So there's a huge event, Mick, uh, in Ferricks on the 28th of September. Now, it's a huge event. Um, I'll be there. Peter Costell will be playing music. It's to remember, remember the 50th anniversary of Mastrum's first ever championship win in 1974. And we're honouring the team of 74 there and the, the 50th anniversary of the under 21 championship win in 73. So if he's around now, Ferricks, the 28th, come down and, and, we'll have and the crack. Tell us, um, you know, the gig you're getting in New York. Would yeah. you ever tell the boys? That if you get sick or one of us gives you a knock or whatever, myself yeah. and Pachi are willing to do the yeah, gig yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, come on over with me. I'm 45 years lover and I was never right over here. There you go. So but I'm in the Taylor Public House in Manhattan yeah, on Friday so night surprised. with Longford's yeah, yeah. New York GAA. Yeah. If you're down in New York, come in. I must have me down and there's a con man. I don't think I'm a con man. Do I look like a con man? Oh, and another thing. Yeah. Ballymahan GAA have a quid games on the, the 18th right. of October in exactly. Longford Arm. Buy your tickets for that as well. Yeah. And you 
you want well, to advertise look, there. You may have noticed the two boys <laughs> while we were recording their lack of professionalism. They were waving at people as they passed by. But look at, they're well known in the area and I, I apologise most profusely. But look at, we'll hopefully get them up to speed for next year. That will be 100%. Oh, he is. Okay. <laughs> See you, Mary. You're doing Donald Trump on it. Give me a hat. That was a good crack, yeah. I think that was good.